This is the most fascinating twist and turn situations that I've heard about in a long time. Before we get into today's video, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is doing well. You guys, today's video, when I tell y'all I have been down the rabbit hole with the research on this one, this is a story, and this is a situation that's been going on like literally as we speak. Y'all stay to the end because just when you think you've got this story figured out, it's going to turn, it's going to turn, it's going to turn again. Before we get into it though, I did want to let you guys know if y'all don't know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. Over there, we do things more casually. I'm getting ready to upload an update on our house and our beekeeping, if you're into that type of thing. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there we talk about more personal story times. We go live over there and we have a $2 tier over there. So all of the true crime stuff that can't go onto YouTube due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my Patreon under the $2 tier. I also have an Instagram as well as a Facebook and a Snapchat, and those are always linked down in the description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the case of Tabo Bester. Now this is a man that is over in South Africa. And when I, this is truly the story that y'all are about to hear is in my opinion, the 2023 version of Bonnie and Clyde. Like I cannot believe all of this stuff really happened and is happening right now as we speak. So let's just jump right into it and start at the beginning. Tabo Bester, who we're guessing is around 39 years old, it's kind of hard to tell, but his mother said that she had him when she was 16 years old. Tabo's father is not in the picture and his mother actually told a story about how she conceived Tabo and she said that it was from somebody forcing themselves on her. She said that she was actually, you know, she was a teenager. She needed a ride home from her sister's house. She was with her friends. The person kept taking different turns. They ended up driving into an area and then he did that and she became pregnant. So that was very long. You didn't know Tabo's father. You uh, were, you were raised. I raised my say. I'm not looking for that. Did I know Tabo was going to be naughty like that? At uh, that time, I should give him away because somebody wanted Tabo. Some uh, Indian people from Lens wanted Tabo, say, I must give him Tabo. And I said, no, I didn't know it was a naughty child. I should give that people Tabo. Now, just being a young teen mom back in the 80s, she needed a lot of help and she also needed to work. So this is when she said that she allowed her parents to take her son and raise him when he was about one years old. Now it is rumored that Tabo began to get into trouble at a very young age. Literally at four years old was the first time that he got caught stealing from a neighbor, which when I heard that, I'm like, okay, four years old, do they know what they're doing? You know, whatever. But he came home with a wad of money and his grandpa saw the money and he said, where did you get that money? And he said, so-and-so gave it to me. So he took him back over to the neighbor's house and the neighbor did not even know the money was missing. That continued to happen. It happened again when when he was five years old with another neighbor would change. And so, although these things could be considered maybe normal as a kid, you know, you know, just grabbing a handful of something and putting it in their pocket and then saying, oh, they gave it to me. When you see the history and what he grew into, then it kind of makes you wonder like, 
was it always in him? And at the age of 17 was his first time being released from prison. As a teenager, he got arrested for different burglary charges, and it is said that his mother actually came and picked him up from prison and drove him back to his grandparents' house when he was 17. Now, his stint in prison didn't help him at all because when Tabo got out, he just kind of elevated his game. He went from taking wads of people's money next to burglarizing people's houses to getting more into to like con work. In the early 2000s, Tabo created a fake modeling agency online and I can only imagine how many people were fooled by this because of the amount of people that get fooled by these type of things now in 2023. Now you're talking about early 2004, 2005, 2006 type of era when the internet was really just kind of starting to grow. He created this fake modeling agency and he was reaching out to young girls, a lot of them being teenagers, who were aspiring models and they were, you know, putting their portfolios online and he would reach out to them and offer them jobs and tell them he could get them brand deals. He was going to take them on trips, da, 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 da. And all they needed to do would be pay him his agent fee, right? And so they believed him. And so he started receiving all of this money from these young, inspiring models, even to the point that he actually ended up meeting up with a few of them. And when he would meet with them and these young women thinking that they're meeting with their agent, he would rob them of their cell phones, their laptops, any kind of electronics, anything that they had that was worth anything. And sometimes he would even push himself on them as well. Tabo continued to do this, take advantage of people, take their money, up his game, and he was very good at conning and lying to people. It was even said that one time he was like at this resort and he had a few of his inspiring models there with him. And the people that worked at the resort recognized him because the last time he was there, he dipped out on a bill that was over $2,000. So they confronted him in front of the two models. And when they did, he paid them the money. And then he told the two models, Listen, they had the wrong guy, but I didn't want to cause a scene, so I just paid them, you know, just kind of like making like this big, bad, plenty of money agent. Like I just paid them because I didn't want to cause a scene, but that wasn't me. So he told the two girls to like go order their food and drinks and just have a good time, and he was going to take care of the bill. What he ended up doing was going back to the room, robbing them of everything that they had, all of their equipment, all of their stuff and left them with an over $3,000 bill. But all of Tabo's scams would come to a halt in 2012 when he was arrested for aring two women and actually killing another one. Tabo would be sentenced to life in prison plus 75 years. Now, during this time, he had an interview with a psychiatrist, and this was actually right before he got his sentencing, and the psychiatrist filmed the interaction, and I'm gonna play a portion of it here for you guys in a second. The professional was coming there to interview him to go speak to the judge about their opinions on his mental state. This is when he said that he did not think what he did to the two women with the R was actually that. And he also talked about how he, he could not say that he murdered anybody because he didn't mean to. He said, you know, I was just there. I had the knife. We got into an argument and, it, you know, it just happened. And so it's just so almost calculated. I don't feel that I, 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 I was right. Hmm. That you're responsible for a death, but it not as a result of an intentional thing that you started out I'm so. responsible for my death, yes, more than more, uh, that's 100% correct. I'm not responsible for killing her. I did not kill her. If, 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 I'm sure if I wanted to kill her, I could have, I'm not a stupid person, I could have done it in a way that the cops wouldn't even know it was me. The rapes happened in a way that I did not know I was doing rape until I left the premises. Because if I knew I was doing rape, I could have covered myself up by using certain methods so that my fingerprints were not dead, etc. When he finally went to court, this is when he was sentenced to life in prison plus 75 years. And people saw this all over the media. And this is when he was deemed the nickname to be the Facebook now, while Tabo was sitting in prison, and mind you guys, this prison that he's in is the second largest private prison in the world. It's also like one of the ones with the toughest people over there in South Africa. I mean, it is 
a big prison and it is very well known. Well, an old flame, somebody that he allegedly met back in 2006, there's conflicting stories. She says that she met him at college, but he allegedly dropped out of school when he was like 11 years old. There was just different things that was said, but nevertheless, sometime between 2016, 2017, an old flame named Dr. Nandipa reached out to him. She began writing him while he was in prison. I have to tell y'all about this because this bothers me, you guys, okay? Now, this woman had it going on. Do you hear me? She was a doctor. She was stunning. She was a celebrity doctor. She was doing all these interviews on television. She had a big social media. Not that these things make you any more better than the next person, but I'm just letting you guys know the success that this woman had, not to mention the role model that she was for young women and even older women that were not only in her country, but all over the world, okay? Stunningly beautiful, just had her own practice. She was doing all kinds of stuff. She was doing Botox. She was doing minor surgical procedures. She was just doing a lot. She had a lot of education and she just had all of the success right in the palm of her hands. And she had worked very hard for it. I heard Dr. Nandipa talk about in an interview how she grew up in a very small town and at 16 years old is when she started working at a pharmacy. I am Dr. Nandipa Magunibana. Mm. I was born in a small village called Epizana in the Eastern Cape. Yeah. And I was raised in Port Edward, which is like a small town closer to Epizana. I was six years old when I told my father that I want to be a doctor. Ben Sazi when I was still very young. So I spent most of my school career <laughs> working towards getting into medical school. Mm. So since primary school, um, high school, in high school, I started working at a pharmacy, Mendina, 16, 16 mm. years mm. old. Mm. So, I mean, literally from her being a teenager, she was already interested in medicine and just continued on that path, worked her butt off to where she's owning her own business and has all this success. And why in the name of the Lord, she thought writing him in prison, I don't know, I don't know. All right, let's go into this. Dr. Nandipa was actually not only this business owner and this celebrity doctor and all of this stuff, she was also married to another doctor living a very lavish lifestyle and had two beautiful young daughters. She seemed to truly have had it all. However, when she started writing Tabo, she began to go and visit him as well. And before you know it, her and her husband split up and she started to fall in love with this con artist in prison. And maybe this is around the time that Tabo decided that, you know, life in prison is just a little bit longer than I wanna spend in there, so how can I get out of here? On a late night in early of March of 2022, other prison inmates said that they heard the prison guards coming into Tabo's cell and dragging him out. He was kicking and screaming, they were dragging him down the hallways, and they ended up taking him to solitary confinement. They took him to a little corner solitary confinement room that truly was never hardly used because it was out of the viewpoint of them watching him and they threw him in the cell. Then on the early morning hours of March 5th of 2022, some smoke started to come out of that cell, like a weird smelling smoke. Officers that worked at the prison said that when they went into the cell, this is where they found a mattress laying on top of Tabo's body, completely burned up and he was burned unrecognizable. They ended up calling the police and the police ended up showing up at almost 7 a.m. So almost four hours after the incident is when the cops showed up. And this is when they pronounced him dead. They removed his body and they actually announced it on the news. They deemed this a self-inflicted ending of it all. The body from there was sent off to have an autopsy and DNA test done. However, that type of thing takes months. It could take anywhere from four to eight months. And so they were just waiting for it to come back. Now, not long after the incident and it was announced that he was gone and no longer here on this earth, 
A woman showed up to the morgue claiming to be his wife. She was throwing a fit and saying, listen, this is my husband's body. I want his body so I can give him the proper burial. I've got his two children. You know, this is unethical or unright. You need to give me my husband's body. He's gone. My children need to grieve, da, 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 da. Because she threw such a fit, they ended up releasing the body to the woman claiming to be his wife. Now she took the body and she was on the way to have it cremated when Tabo's mother showed up to the morgue and said, hey, I want to take my son's body and give him a proper burial. This is when they said, no, his wife has already came here. She's already picked up the body. She said, hold up, hold up, hold up. My son don't have no wife. He, didn't, he ain't got no kids. Who did you give his body to? So she, you know, is throwing a fit in there too. This is my son's body. Who did you give it to? He's not married. Da, 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 da. During this time, she went ahead and provided a DNA sample as well so they could match it to the body. They did end up getting the body back before it was officially cremated so they could follow through with the autopsy and then do the DNA testing. Now, when they did the autopsy of Tabo's body, this is when they found that there was no smoke in the lungs of the body at all. So that told them that this body was already dead when, this, when the fire happened, but how could that be, right? Then they also found out by examining the body that the body had actually died from blunt force trauma to the head. And then when the DNA came back, it was not a match to his mother. So this is when they went, hold on. Whose body is this? Whose body was found in cell 35 burned? And where is Tabo if it's not him? This is when the South African police launched a manhunt for him. A police spokeswoman for the South African police said, a case of murder is under investigation following the outcome of the DNA analysis that confirmed that the body of the deceased was found not to be Tabo Bester. So now everybody is really scratching their heads. How did this man get out of of the second largest private prison in the world, a very, very, very secure prison. How did another body get in there? Whose body is this? They don't even know who this person is. They come to find out the body that was in the cell was only four foot six inches and Tabo was well over, I think he's like five, eight or something like that, well over. I mean, we're talking about a foot difference even just in height. It was just so confusing and now they're looking for this man and they cannot figure out how he got out. Well, the more that they started to investigate the prison is when they realized, okay, this is an inside job because why was he moved to that solitary confinement room? The cameras just happened to not be working and shooting that area, which it was already hard to see, but there was somebody had tampered with the security footage. And so now this is becoming an even bigger situation than just an inmate escaping. So now that Tabo's face is plastered all over the news media outlet again, this is when the police started getting phone calls from women saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've been talking to this man on the phone. We've been having Zoom calls, Skype calls for years now. He runs the company 21 Century and they're like, no, he's an inmate. You know, he's been, he's serving life in prison. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've been talking to this man. So come to find out for years while Tabo was in prison, prison. He was running a very lucrative scam, posing as the head of 21 Century Media. He had even went as far as inventing an extensive backstory for Tom, the name he was using on his website. A board of directors documented for 21st Century Group includes a profile that describes Tom as a South African investment strategist, a progressive and innovative businessman, and a thought leader with sound knowledge of how to operate a successful global brand. And his profile even listed several companies that he, Tom, started, including the world's largest promotion company, which he allegedly started at the age of 21 by all of this. Okay, so cops are looking into this. They're like, hold the heck up. We thought we just got this Facebook this off the street. He's in prison. He's got a whole business going. He's got his his pictures on websites and, and he's doing Zoom calls. How is he doing Zoom calls? Oh, he wasn't just doing Zoom calls, y'all. In 2018, this company that he, this fake scammy company that he created all from allegedly inside the walls of the prison, they had a like 
big fancy to do meeting you guys I'm talking about there were celebrities there they had fancy dinners and he was on a zoom call being streamed at the front of this gala that he had put on in a full suit and tie but he told them that he could not make it to this event because he was in New York in a meeting so they believe they're talking to him and he is the chairman of this event you guys and it was even done on June 13th on his birthday and the people there sung happy birthday to him. Check this out. Again, you guys, this man is in prison serving a life sentence. So now investigators are like, what is going on? Obviously, he's got connections on the inside of the prison for him to be able to, at the very least, pull away from his cell, put a suit and tie on, stand behind a whiteboard with good lighting and zoom with a decent enough internet in a correctional facility, a meeting, oh my gosh. Now, since all of this, former employees at this company said that he was a very hands-on boss that anytime that they needed money and they said okay we need money for this event he would say okay and he would have the money transferred how is he doing this like it is wild they said that he had lots of meetings where that were very thought provoking where he was like teaching them how to be better in business and da 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 and it just never even dawned to them that he was anybody other than this tom with all of this extensive history and education and background that he claimed to be. Tom even had a Twitter account where he had like all of these photos of him out doing normal things, but really what he was doing was photoshopping pictures of his face on other people's pictures. He even went as far as talking other people from other companies into leaving their jobs to come and work for him. He was running this entire mega company with all of these employees all over the place, making these financial transactions, these Zoom meetings, all of this stuff from within the prison. He had to have had major connections, but even how and why? So investigators are finding all this out right now, and they're realizing that they have more on their hands than just, again, some escape you know, prisoner, and where is he at? What is he doing? It seemed to some of the locals in South Africa that the actual police could have even been in on it because even though the news media outlets reported that, you know, maybe he had escaped and it wasn't his body and da 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 da, it wasn't as big as it should have been, especially knowing that he had all these victims and stuff out here. And it is rumored that the reason why it didn't go out in the media real big is because they were embarrassed. But no matter how embarrassed officials were, Nobody can escape a viral moment on social media. And in June of 2022, somebody took a picture of their favorite celebrity doctor out shopping in public. And when they did, this is when people started to recognize Tabo looking a little different with their favorite celebrity doctor. Somebody even sent this photo of the two of them shopping to one of his alleged victims and she confirmed this is him. What is he doing out? Oh my gosh. As word began to travel, especially on Twitter, people started posting different videos with him. I'm talking about more models. Okay. This man now has escaped from prison, left the body in the cell. Okay. The whole shebang. He's still meeting with models and doing this whole scamming thing and people posted videos of it. And so now they're like, wait a minute, is this actually him? They didn't know for sure about like the body not matching up with the DNA, but wait a minute, this looks like him. And there was all of this swirling online and, and discussion about it. What is Tabo doing out on the streets with this celebrity doctor? It is alleged that him and her started a new company while he was out. Now I'm not even going to say on the run because in their minds, the prison, they think he's dead. So now he's living his life. He just changed his appearance a little bit, put on a little weight, grew his hair out, put on some sunglasses, and they're they're laying low, 
and they're doing more things, but you know, he's not living and ducking behind. I mean, obviously he's out shopping with no kind of mask on or anything. So Tabo by this time is now going by the name TK. And it is believed that he was running a million dollar scam construction company with his celebrity doctor girlfriend, who he was claiming was his wife. And the couple together were convincing several different companies to give them millions of dollars for them to do these construction jobs that they never did. And this is around the time things began to really unravel for Dr. Nandipa herself. A video surfaced online of a private investigator confronting her in public while she was eating lunch with somebody. See, it is said that she was leasing a white Mercedes Benz and she owed about $40,000 American money left on it. It is alleged that Dr. Nandipa tried to drive over the border with some fake tags on. Well, when she tried to drive over the border with the fake tags, Border Patrol pulled over and said, uh-uh, this, this don't go with this. You need to pull this car over here, leave it. She gets out the car, walks back over the border lines into South Africa and leaves her car there abandoned. What she was trying to do, we still don't know, but this private investigator that actually worked for the car company walked up on her and began to confront her about it. Now, when you see this video, she's so cool, calm, and collected. Just watch. <laughs> So this is the, no one's fighting over the previous price. I said you paid 600, it's 650, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. There's still a balance of 700 outstanding. Mm -hmm. How are we going to get that 700? So what they're willing to do is drop the case against you. Mm -hmm. Devin doesn't want to lay the case there. There, there is the case, mm -hmm. but Devin, Devin said we can do this amicably. All he wants is his money. Um, and then I'll give you everything. We'll, we'll, oh, you'll, you'll yes, give we'll, 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 this is your copy. So what, you will, what we're willing to do is we'll go fetch the car um, from the border. We can't get the car. I'll be honest with you, we're basing to get the car. Okay, it's a big mission. Devin just, Devin just Devin wants Perfect. his money. He wants the 700, which is fair, ma'am. You know, he helped you. He trusted you. And uh, you went back on your word. Uh, you haven't paid him in full. So you just need to put him the outstanding 700,000 and you'll leave it. Otherwise, he's, he, he wants to go to the extent of putting everything over social media. You don't want that kind of thing, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't want bad exposure for yourself, for your business. It's just sort of out of make it you well, pay the man and let's move on. Can we come to an agreement? Well, we need to come to the agreement. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not what we want to. I'll speak to the person Devin had an agreement with. And then this video in this situation with the car was allegedly taken and happened in January of this year, 2023. Well, in March of this year, 2023 is when it went viral that it was official. He was alive. He had escaped prison and he was on the run somewhere. And the media outlets went wild and everybody was starting to look for him. When they began to dig more into Dr. Nandipa, this is when they realized that she had abandoned her whole business, her whole medical practice. She abandoned a mansion that her and some man was living in with her two daughters and she had just left it there abandoned. And it is also rumored that they had a lady that was cleaning their house that walked into the house one day to clean it and never came out. There's a lot of rumors online that this woman could be buried somewhere in the backyard or something. I don't know how true that is, but I saw a lot of chatter about that online that there's still a worker that worked for them missing. I don't know if she saw something. I don't even know if it's true, but that, that's part of the story as well. And to think that she had her two daughters living in a house with this man and she's done lost everything and now on the run with him, nuts. Then on Saturday, April 8th, it was announced that Tabo had been arrested the night before. Not only was he arrested, he was arrested along with his girlfriend, the doctor, the one that he claims to be his wife. It comes to find out she was still married to her ex-husband. They were not actually husband and wife, but they claimed to be husband and wife, as well as another person. And everybody was trying to figure out who this other person was. The police minister said that the three were held near the Kenya border as they attempted to leave the country. Authorities stopped a black SUV and the fugitives were in it. They were traveling after leaving a hotel. It is said that all three of the suspects had multiple passports on them. I mean, they were getting ready to go. Now get this. I want y'all to think about this. Now, 
Now, Tabo, he's he's already got a life sentence. So no matter what more they give him, whatever. Okay. The the doctor has just, I don't know, but 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 wait, we're gonna talk about her. Now, the third person that was arrested was her father. Come to find out, y'all, the doctor's father had connections with allegedly the warden at the prison. The warden is being arrested as well, which is how they got him in and out. The doctor allegedly was going down and claiming bodies from the morgue. We don't know how she did it, what she said to get them. Allegedly, she went and got three dead bodies, you guys. And that's how they ended up getting a body into the cell. So they had to have all kinds of connections with the guards to get the body in quietly and da 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 It is even said that she ended up dumping one of the bodies in a river with the tags still on the toe and everything. She didn't use that one. She just used that one, the four foot six body that was found burnt in the cell and that she she masterminded all of this along with her father now her father and Tabo are the ones that showed up in court together so they're in court and then her her brother has since spoken out about all of this and like everybody's under investigation and I'm trying to figure out how this man manipulated all of these people for all of this time, obviously he's a dangerous man. I mean, he has been known to kill and we know still lie in your face, manipulate and not blink twice about it. But why would she do this? And I don't care how much you love somebody, when you go and get dead bodies from a morgue and, and do all this, you gotta have something off about you too. I mean, normal people, I, I just don't see how you can be manipulated into that. You guys can let me know. And the father, she had plenty of money. It is rumored, here we go, it is rumored that she, they could have been into the organ harvesting trade, which is why she so easily got bodies and which is why they had so much money, even though they were doing all of these scams. But who really knows what all happened? All we know for sure is that he's going back to the same sentence he already had, and now all of these people are going down with him and for what we know that two prison officials were arrested because of their help in this situation and three were fired so as of now we know five people that worked at the prison allegedly helped in this situation along with the others that we talked about when i was researching this down this rabbit hole of all of this stuff i thought this man really could have done anything in life he had hardly no education and he built all of this stuff. He just did it the wrong way. He lied, he stole, he hurt people. What if he would have taken that talent, that smarts, that ambition, that drive, and put it towards something positive? You know what I mean? This is what I say when I tell you guys when I was in prison, there were so many smart people in prison. Don't think just because you're smart, that's all you need in life, you know? Because there were brilliant people in prison, just like this guy is going back to prison. Brilliant, but he wasted it. He went down the wrong path, he did the wrong things, and somewhere along the way, he turned into, I guess, a monster. You gotta be to be able to continue to lie and steal from people and hurt people and threaten people over and over again like that. So what do you guys think? Have y'all heard about this? This is, this is a movie. This has got, this is going to be made into a movie. We still don't even know what's going to happen yet. And what do you think about the doctor? She had it every, she had everything. She's bringing a dead body into the prison and dumping one into the river. And then the father, why would he get involved? A mess, y'all. Let me know what y'all think. Other than that, I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. I love you guys. Thank you all for being here. And I will see y'all next week. Don't forget to go outside. Bye.